Am I on? Am I on? There we go. There we go. I'm on. Normally I'm a little off. Welcome, everyone. I don't know if you were paying attention to the screens for those of you in person, but we did that intentionally to make sure you knew that Becky didn't grow an extra pair of hands for that set. That was a four-handed piece, so uh, through the power of technology and through the ability of uh, being able to record and then play. So we give her a hand, right? <laughs> Two. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to worship this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome one and all as we gather once again to remind ourselves of God's amazing grace and God's unconditional love in Jesus Christ. Welcome as we come into this space. And we welcome those online who are also coming into this space. Special reminder for you, please light a candle, set aside the space. Mind yourself of God's presence, even there. Uh, and if you're going to join us for communion, please make sure you have those elements handy. For those of you in the space, I hope you have your bulletins and your inserts and all that kind of fun stuff so we are ready to go. There's a couple of things to make you aware of is, again, we continue to seek to live out our mission, to live and invite people to live in grace, generosity, reaching out, advocacy, compassion, and encouragement. There's a couple of things coming up. First thing is a brush with kindness for Habitat for Humanity. Uh, there's a couple of different events. These are things that are meant for pretty much most people to get involved with. This is not a kind of a high end skill things. If you can roll a paintbrush, you can do some other stuff. There's some things there that you can do. There's uh, in the grace notes that came out yesterday, there's information about ways to get involved. There's a couple of these uh, events that are coming up. It's a great opportunity to just get involved and to do something. And maybe if you have not worked with Habitat before, get to see a little bit of what they do to help provide housing for people, especially people in need. Now, uh, you know, again, I'll mention this now as opposed to the offering. Normally at the offering, we're after your money. Now we're looking after your blood again. There is a big shortage of blood across the country right now. Uh, again, we are hosting another Red Cross blood drive, and that'll be on the 22nd. It'll be in Werner Hall. Uh, there's a ways to sign up and register uh, and to connect. And also, again, please invite, if you have uh, friends and neighbors who do this or are interested in doing this, you just give them the information and they will be able to, um, you know, be able to register through these links. So... There's those two ways of doing it, but one of the other things that we seek to be is always is we are disciples of Jesus, which means students. And so there is a special program that the Grand Canyon Synod hosts, and one of our very own was one of the first graduates. Uh, and so I invite Terry Lappin to come to the, the lectern and tell us about her experience and an invitation for you to possibly get involved and learn more. Good morning, I'm Terry Lappin. I'm gonna read what I wrote, okay? <laughs> I graduated from the Diaconia program about two years ago. The Diaconia program is being offered to you by this Grand Canyon Synod. It's a program of classes to help lay persons like yourselves grow in your faith. There are a few others in our congregation who have been part of this program too. A little background information about me. I take constitutions very seriously. So several years ago, when I was asked to serve on the church council, I asked for a copy of our constitution. Have you read it? In the very beginning, it sends, says, we accept the writings of the Book of Concord, including the unaltered Augsburg Confession and the small called out articles. I had no idea what they were, yet there I was about to serve on our council. And then what about the diet of worms? Have you ever heard of that one? What kind of person was Luther eating worms? For many years, I felt I lacked an understanding of the Lutheran faith. I came up, I was grow, brought up as a Roman Catholic. I can change to Lutheranism, but I never went through any kind of confirmation or anything like that. So the diaconia program seemed like a good match to my desire to, for a more in-depth appreciation of the Lutheran faith. I learned that the diet of worms is not about eating the wiggly things you find in your garden. 
It's actually a city in Germany and it's pronounced Worms. I think that's how I, yeah, okay, pastor saying yes. <laughs> and I learned its significance in the Reformation. I also learned what the Book of Concord contains and I came to thoroughly enjoy Luther's writings. I also made friends through the program and I look forward to seeing them each summer when we have our summer retreat. So what may intrigue you to consider diaconia? Maybe you want to know more about the early church leaders. Would you like to learn more about the Lutheran beliefs and creeds? How about our understanding of theology and Christian ethics? The ELCA has a whole list of ethic statements and uh, it's interesting reading. Um, do you wonder why our service, worship service, is the way it is? There is an actual structure to it. You see it every Sunday, you, work, you experience it every Sunday, but understanding the different parts is very helpful. Do you want a deeper understanding of the New Testament? The New Testament class isn't like your typical Bible study, but rather a look into the background authors and the context of the canon. I learned so much about the Gospels and how Paul's writings influence us today. Pastor Richard, who's over there, taught the Old Testament class. He challenged us to read it not as 21st century Christians, but as Jews before the time of Christ. That was eye-opening. Pastor David taught us about the sharing of the good news of Christ, as, both as individuals and as a congregation. He encouraged us to develop our own witness in a short elevator talk, like two, three minutes long. Pastor Stewart, who some of you may know from his time here at Beautiful Savior, taught two classes, including one about daily prayer styles. The Diaconia program consists of 12 courses offered over a two-year period. It's a time commitment, um, but the time went by very fast. I looked forward to each class and each new experience. The program sometimes moved me outside of my comfort zone, but it also broadened and deepened my faith. I'm glad the opportunity is again being presented to you, made possible through our synod and through the dedicated instructors, instructors who I've mentioned and many others. So I encourage you to consider the diaconia program. Classes begin in September. They're offered both by Zoom and also by in-person. If I've inspired you to consider diaconia, you'll want to attend one of the information sessions. There's a Zoom session on August 11th and an in-person one on August 16th. They are on, whoops, they're listed on the bottom of your, your uh, take home part. Um, and there's also an information sheet in there. And they're also included in, in the grace notes that you receive by email. So lots of information, it's all consistent, you won't be confused. You're not obligated to join if you attend any of these information sessions. However, if you do, I believe it will have an impact on you and your faith and your life as a Lutheran Christian. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions or wanna to talk to me, I'll be around after the service. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Yes, it is an opportunity to learn and to grow. Uh, sometimes we might think of the fact that uh, we speak of physical exercise. We might even hear a spiritual exercise. Well, how about exercising your mind a little bit? And you might be surprised what you learn. Uh, so if you have any questions, please see Terry, see me. Uh, there's links on it. Yes, just um, there is a class. The, the in-person class will meet Saturday mornings. It meets at Our Saviors. And Tuesday night is the Zoom class. So if there's a time or you know, travel issue or whatever, there's opportunities. Please, Jesus says, you know, get behind me to learn. Here's a time, here's an opportunity for you to consider. So now, as we consider how we follow, we gather in this space to remind ourselves of the one and the good news in whom we gather, Jesus Christ. So I invite you to rise as you're able as we continue with confession and forgiveness.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word and fighting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word and fighting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Jesus gave his mandate, share the good news. That he came to save us and set us free. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Let none be forgotten throughout the world in the triune name of God, go and baptize. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word and fighting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Help us to be faithful, standing steadfast, walking in your precepts, led by your Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Oh God, our defender. Storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings, which will come to us via Zoom today. First reading is from Kings chapter 19. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. <clears throat> He said, go out and stand in the mountain before the Lord. 
for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks and pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after, and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall appoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. Then you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel-Meholah, as your prophet. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, yet Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Word of God, word of life. Please join me in reading the Psalm 85. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak, seek, speak, speak peace to his people. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory shall may dwell in your land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet righteousness and peace and will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. The gospel of our Lord comes to us from the sixth chapter of the gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, this is a continuation of the feeding of the 5,000 from last week. Remember, Jesus tried to get away from it all, and he couldn't. All these people followed, and his disciples said, okay, well, you got to get rid of these people. They got to go get food. And Jesus said, you give them something to eat. And out of the five loaves and two fish, they fed 5,000 men plus women and children. This continues the story. Immediately, he made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, to Bethsaida. Well, he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. When he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning, walking on the sea. He intended to pass them by. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astounded. For they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was, and wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms. They laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. You know, there's a friend, a friend of mine, was trying to get his boat ready for the season. 
unfortunately it wasn't working so well, so he had to take it to the dock. They weren't entirely sure what to do with it there, so they put it up for peer review. But too many of them got involved and it became a case of peer pressure. So my friend decided he was going to get a get well card for his boat. So on his way to the Hallmark star, his car broke down. So he got stuck between a dock and a card place. Okay, we'll stop. <laughs> I know, <laughs> pastor, you're all wet. But Jesus wasn't. Isn't that amazing? Now, Jesus is walking on water. Now, most of us, when we think of the walking on water stories, we think of Jesus walking on water and Peter making this grand statement, and if it is you, command me to come out and I will come out to you. And Peter starts walking and then he freaks out because he sees the waves and loses sight of Jesus and starts to sink. Notice that's, that's not here. It's a nice reminder of the fact that the four Gospels are four distinct stories that there are different things that they're trying to bring up. Please do yourself a favor by not trying to mush them all together into one thing that one of my seminary professors referred to as the equivalent of pre-digested baby pap. What's going on? Well, obviously, Peter standing on the water or not standing on the water isn't the issue. And really, Jesus walking on the water is almost kind of an add-on, isn't it? So he's at, you know, well, big surprise. He had to catch up to the boat, didn't he? But it almost seemed like he wasn't planning on joining them in the boat. It's just the fact that they couldn't make it all the way across because they were straining at the oars and they couldn't make it across in the face of the wind. He was just trying to get to the other side. Why did Jesus cross the lake? To get to the other side. And in Mark, he does that a lot. That lake stands for a lot of things. It is a major boundary between the Gentile side and the Jewish side. Between a place where he would cast out a man who's got thousands of demons in him and cast them out into pigs. Obviously, not a Jewish side. To where he's tested on another side. But notice he does healings on both. He has to teach his disciples on both sides. And more importantly, he has to teach them in the boat. How many times? Don't you fear that we're, we're perishing? Wake up. Don't you care that we are perishing? The last time they were in a big storm in the boat and Jesus just happened to be sleeping peacefully. And now their hearts are hardened. They don't get it. They don't understand the loaves. Okay, do any of you understand the loaves reference in a boat? Okay, I'm not seeing a lot of heads up and down. Okay, it's something I struggle with as well. What's the point? What's going on here? Well, maybe we need to again stay, shall we say, grounded in the lake and stay there for a second. Water was not considered, water had, they had a conflicted history with water in that place. Okay, one, it's Predominantly a very dry area. So think about Tucson until we had all of this rain and the monsoons, how dry we were and how many red flags were coming up. But also how intimately we need water because they're talking about having to shut down the amount of water given to farms and stuff like that because Lake Mead and all these other places are getting so low because of so little water. We understand that water is life, and so did they. You needed water to make sure you had crops. You needed to water your flocks. You needed water. But at the same token, there was no thought of getting into a ship in the Mediterranean and heading straight out. No one did that more than once. 
the ships weren't built for open sea. And you look at the Mediterranean and go, that's open sea? <laughs> Hell, yes. To what they had, definitely. The sea was seen as a place of chaos, a place of danger. Stop and think, all the way back in Genesis, in the beginning, when the world was formless and void, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. What does it mean for Jesus to have to keep telling his disciples on the water, peace? What does it mean for Jesus to be walking on that water? Perhaps that's the reason we can find peace in the middle of chaos, in the middle of a storm, in the middle of things that are rocking our boat, shall we say. Because the one we follow is the one who commands the winds and the waves and they obey him. The one we follow is the one who can stand on that water and go, peace be with you. The one that we follow is the one who provides. Do you not remember about the loaves? How are we going to feed all these people? All we have is five loaves and two fish. And he fed them all and had 12 baskets of leftovers. Even in the midst of want, even in the midst of worry, Jesus provides. The God we follow is not a God of scarcity. The God we follow is not like the vending machine gods of many of the period of that time, where people would have to go and beseech their God for rain, because if they didn't do it, God wouldn't give them rain. And if they didn't do the right sacrifices and say the right prayers in the right time and the right order, they would be punished with no rain and therefore no crops. This is a reminder that our God provides, our God is. It is I, do not be afraid. The God of creation is in our midst. It is I, which is very similar in construction to I am. That name given from a burning bush in the middle of the desert to Moses. It's a reminder of God's presence in our lives. And for us, we remember that most powerfully through communion. Now, one of the hazards of communion, though, I have to admit, is still the fact that in communion, you get this little wafer, and you get this little thimble of wine or grape juice, and you go, really, this is a God who provides? Please do not allow the quantity of what is in the communion cup influence your understanding of the quantity of God's love and presence in your life. <clears throat> As one of my dear friends said in seminary, you know, we need bigger shot glasses and no more Christ Krispies. But the point of communion stands. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me, the one who fed the many, out of a little bit. The one who stood on the waves with the wind. The one who could command the wind and the waves, and they obeyed. But the same one that was in the beginning, that spirit that hovered over the face of the deep and created, this God is with us still. And this God calls us forward. Because notice, as bloody as the 
<laughs> directions were given to Elijah, and that sound of sheer silence, the message was, keep going. It wasn't stay here and hide. It wasn't go back and try to do things over again. It's get going. You have work to do. And notice that in this story, it doesn't end with him getting into the boat and everything being peaceful and then being, I don't know, what's going on, dude? It finishes with them landing on the other side, mooring that boat, and going about the villages, the farms, and the cities, healing any and all who need it, even those who could just touch the, fr the fringe of his cloak. We are, as a congregation, as a church, as a nation, having gone through a very tumultuous point in history. And it's not that everything is all calm and peaceful anymore. There are still lots to be done. But the same God that brought us through and walked with us all this way through is the same God who walks with us into the future and calls us saying, okay, you have more to do. What are you going to do? I give you grace because that's what I do. What will you do with it? How will you be my body? How will you remember and show others that you remember? And so let us remember the water and the water of baptism, which did wrap us in God's love. And let's remind ourselves as we go forward of the promises God gave us in holy baptism. If you repeat after me, please. These are the promises God given to you. I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. I've been marked with the cross of Christ forever. I am Christ's. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And remember that God loves you. And so do I. Amen.
tell God's people they are saved from sin's eternal sway. Then shall God's mercy from on high shine forth and never cease to drive away the gloom of death and lead us into peace. I invite you to join me as we confess the faith of the church through the words of the Apostles' Creed, our baptismal creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come to the time of prayers of the people, we lift up the prayers that we've received. One of the things that I have done um, is, you know, we continue to uh, rotate the prayer list through in the large sections. If there's a name that comes off and you wish it to come back on because it's a more persisting issue, please notify the office. Uh, we keep returning that, and that's what, but that's also why sometimes you see names for a while. And one of the things, especially since tomorrow starts the academy and Marana and all that other places. I have switched that section of prayers from first responders and healthcare to teachers and people who work in schools. I gathered a list. Um, please, if I missed any, please let me know. I'm still learning. But as we, as we gather to pray, let us prepare our hearts for prayer. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. all those needing health and healing, especially Danielle, Diane, Anne, Mary, Barbara, Aaron, Louise, Ryan, Jerry, Manuel, Doug, Jasmine, Allison, Celeste, Jack, and Olivia. The Lord, hear our prayer. All those dealing with cancer, especially Hans, Kenya, JR, Richard, Kay, Jeannie, Heidi, Susan, Shirley, Annie, Barb, Kay, Sean, Jake, and Jim. Oh Lord, hear our prayer.
teachers, administrators, aides, support staff, bus drivers and attendants, and all others who work in education and care for the children, especially Rhonda, Mary, Lisa, Cindy, Issa, Taylor, Daniela, Rebecca, Pete, Michelle, Terry, Peter, Dan, Bob, Janice, Mary, Colleen, Kim, and Gray. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Neil Zo and Jeff Paichura. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who are facing tragedies and hardships near and far, man-made and natural, for those who are afraid and feel insecure where they are and how they are, especially those impacted by the natural disasters and the floodings and the fires. For all the families that are in crisis, and those people feeling alone and isolated. For a quick and safe distribution of vaccines, especially in light of this Delta variant, for care, compassion, justice, and peace for all. For those who are known only to God that are in our hearts right now. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for all the ways in which you remind us of your presence, of all the ways you are in our midst, and all the ways you help show care. We give thanks for groups like Habitat for Humanity, Interfaith Community Services, and we bless the peanut butter and the other non-perishable foods off to them. For the lot, for the Red Cross, and trying to get blood to people in need, for those who respond in all ways to those in need and insecurity, bringing a sign of peace and love. We give thanks for our academy and pray for a good and wonderful year for the kids and for the staff. And we just give you thanks for this gift of life and your presence throughout it. So we celebrate the birthdays of Justin Leroy Doug Liggett, Jim, Jim Lippert, Andres Machado, and the anniversaries of Shannon and Reed Bryant, and Terry and Tim Duggan. In all of the other ways that we see your love, all the other ways we are reminded of your presence, all the other ways we see your abundance. May we celebrate it, may we give thanks, and may we learn to share. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please find some good, safe ways to share peace now and always.
Offering plates again, but uh, for those of you in person, again, the offering plates are back there in the narthex and the gathering area there. Um, there is also, you know, if you haven't picked up your envelopes yet, they're still there. But again, we receive mail and there's all of the electronic giving options on the website, including the ability to dedicate to certain you know, special things like Sunday dollars, and uh, things like that. Sunday Dollars just had uh, a, a, an experience just this past week where they were able to deliver a whole bunch of backpacks and other school supplies uh, to Butterfield and help out some kids there. Did I report that right, Karen? As I'm looking at, okay, good. So, so thank you to all who helped make that possible. So, and also a reminder that you may, you should have received an email this past week about uh, worship assistance. Another way you can give is of your time and of your talents. Uh, there's different ways in which as we continue to go forward as the church, uh, but as well as just some of the traditional ways of reading and ushering and stuff like that. Please fill it out online. You can send it back to Jenny and then we can keep going forward with that. So let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Now as we start... Um, further preparing our hearts and minds for communion. Uh, a reminder uh, for those of you online to please, you know, have your elements in front of you. Uh, plate, cup, doesn't have to be fancy. Crackers, bread, something simple. Grape juice, wine, something simple. Again, Jesus took the simple items off of the banquet table. He didn't pick the high, big, expensive items, the simple items that we should have all the time, the staples, shall we say as a reminder of his presence. And for us gathered here, again, for communion, you would be invited at the appropriate time to come down the center aisle, um, hold out your hands like, you know, I've heard it in one says it's like Noah's Ark, and in other ones, it's like the cradle that held the Christ child. Open your hands to receive. The wafer will be placed into your hands. There are gluten-free wafers for those who need them. Just let me know as you come forward. And then you would turn to either the tables on either side, and there will be a cup of wine and a cup of grape juice there for you to pick up and take and drink. And there are baskets to collect the cups that are there. That's all the directional stuff. Now let us focus on the reason why. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gathered around the throne of grace, let us proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, for we shall be filled. 
we gather this time at this place to remind ourselves of all that God has given us throughout the years and the reminder of that which will carry us forward into the future. We give thanks for all the ways God has blessed and been with us and brought us peace and given us love and given us mercy and given us grace. At this time, we give thanks for the ways in which we are filled in all ways by Christ so that we may go forth and share. So we remember on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it, gave it for us to eat and said, take and eat all of you. This is my body. It is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it for all the drinks, saying, take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So once again, may we remember your presence. Once again, may we be filled by your love and grace and mercy. Once again, we ask the Holy Spirit to raise us up and lead us forth in joy, proclaiming Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. I invite my communion assistants to come forward at this point and take their, their, their positions. Uh, for those of you online, I invite you to take communion. If you have someone there, you can take turns giving and receiving. Please do so. If you are by yourself, please remember that you're not. Christ is there, the body of Christ, the communion of saints is all gathered to celebrate this gift. So the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, take and eat, take and drink. And for those who are here, the invitation is given to come forward and receive the gift of Christ.
good it is to hear the choir again. <laughs> and so, if you are interested in joining said choir, please see Aaron, see Becky, or just let it be known to anybody else and they will hear it no matter where you are and will come and ask. <laughs> With that, and with what we have received, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Following the dismissal, there's a time for, you know, gathering here in the space for those of you online who wish to uh, gather in Zoom and on Facebook Live and have some time together, please do so. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.